Hi, this video will be an in-depth look into Ritopo planes. Here I have my high poly mesh in Marvelous Designer and now we'll take a look at the settings of export. For this I recommend using export OBJ selected and once you select directory for your file uh, the settings will show up. For them I recommend using thin and welded and for the scale we need to set 0.1%. And now we are set. Let's move to Blender. And here, once we import our cloth, we'll start by adding uh, 3D to patterns uh, GeoNodes modifier to it. You'll find it in Asset Library. And once we apply it, yeah, first thing you see that some patterns are overlapping each other and the rotation is at 90 for the x-axis, so we need to apply our rotation. Now it lies flat on the floor, but we need to now fix those overlapping UV islands and we will do that in UV editor. Uh, for this, the workflow that I recommend is that First of all, to select all of the mesh and inside of UV, uh, pick uh, seams from islands. And now when you look at the model, you can see those seams at the borders of UV islands. And with those, uh, when we change our mode inside of UVs, we can now, by pressing L, select whole pattern in 3D viewport. Just make sure that you are in the faces selection for this to work best. And now also thanks to that, you can see in the 3D viewport which pattern exactly are you editing. So yeah, let's now skip ahead to our UVs mm, properly set up. And now let's go back to the 3D garment to pattern and let's turn it back on. Uh, inside of it, there is this important function, which is the UV map name, and it needs to be the same as the object's UV map. So you can uh, check it out inside of the object and here. And you can see that if the name would not fit, this is the debug info that you will get. So you need to check if the name is correct. So that's it for this option and next up is the uh, simplify option um, and this simplify option will let us work with heavy, very heavy meshes like here we have 1.5 million polygons and once we apply simplify you will see that retopo planes will work lightning fast. So now we are all set up, let's drop our Retopo main, which is our starting kit for Retopology. Let's change the base density to lower and let's pick our patterns. And now uh, we are finally ready for Retopology. And now you can see the power of this simplify option, since we are using the 1.5 million source mesh for the garment and it is working lightning fast and that's all we need for the retopology. And then just when you are ready with your retopo and want to transfer all the details, just go back to the source garment and uncheck the simplify option. And now let's skip ahead to the final retopo once again. And uh, yeah, there is this option of smooth flow poly also that gives you a nice result. But now I'd like to concentrate on the backbone of this tool which is the auto density settings and the crease control of the density. So yeah, once it's unchecked, you will see indicated by this red color that there is a difference in the density among the patterns. And how this option works is that it looks at the poly loops across all of your mesh and it picks the highest value among the patterns and applies it to the rest of the poly loop. And thanks to it, you know, you can skip all the tedious process of making sure that the edge count of the patterns is the same. And when we look at it in action, 
we can uh, select our retopo plane and when we change the density with the edge crease you can see it change on the sleeves or any patterns connected to the edge we are changing right now and now let's move on to another functionality that is inside of retopo planes let's uh, pin our modifier on the panel on right so it is accessible at all times and the functionality is the full crease control and once it's on you will see this indicator that says edge crease is at zero that's because we now change the scale of the influence of edge crease and we need the edge crease to be at 0.5 for the neutral state for this there is this neat tool that you'll find in the edit mode and now we can select the full poly loop and we can not only increase the density but we can also decrease it but you also need to remember to select the whole poly loop because you, if you select just one edge you can increase the density but you cannot go lower since we are picking the highest density across the all of the pattern so like here you can use this um, helper debug of poly loops you can also look at the colors at the patterns to find the full poly loop so that part might be a little bit tricky but yeah it comes with the full control of how your mesh finally looks and it is like very helpful in many many cases okay let's see now mm, i think we are now set yeah and now it is working we can see in our final retopo that we have the full control of the density and for the very final part uh, something that i should probably start with uh, if you wonder how to preview colors of the ui it's just the material preview mode and uh, the very final thing also uh, pretty important if you were to retopo more objects in this scene you can of course do that but uh, there is one thing that you need to uh, know about and um, that is whenever you are dropping uh, the asset from the asset library it is uh, dropped into the scene as the instance so in that case uh, we need to duplicate the retopo planes collection first um, because it was picking the same collection as the uh, first retopo main and then we pick the cloth pattern okay and now we are uh, ready to start and you will see that everything works fine uh, however the thing happening under the hood uh, because that second retopo main is an instance it will actually slow down uh, the retopo planes uh, geometry nodes and we need to actually click on the button with the number of instances and now that these objects are separate uh, the calculations will not influence one another and it will be as fast as it should so yeah that's it for this video uh, you can also watch the other video where i go step by step through the process of creating retopo with retopo planes you can also find documentation online but for now that's it thank you for watching and as usual i hope you'll find this tool useful thank you